let's admit him. Brookie Cookie. Hopefully Brookie Cookie's back, man. You back in, Brookie Cookie? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So oh, listen. I asked you the question. We cut all the deals. I'll cut you into two parts here, or I'll merge the two together. Everything okay? It's commercial break. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Commercial break. Okay. So listen. First off, who's Brookie Cookie? My daughter. Your daughter. Yeah, Big old smile. Brookie. I love it. I love yeah. it. I know that you and my our, our favorite things. I think I know I can speak for me. I can't really speak mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Being a dad's probably my favorite thing. Favorite thing in the world. So you asked a good question, I think, before the commercial break. Which yeah, was, yeah. But it's being, you know what? I'll come back to NAAFS, I promise. Yeah, it, no, all good. It is is uh, being a dad your favorite thing? So you said, hey, you were a wild man in your 20s, right? Yeah. And what changed? What, what kind of changed uh, when you, you know, I type deal? That was it. Yeah. That. Having my child. Right? That, having that's what changed i knew it, you know it, to say it it's like this when my dad passed away i was living right for me but i i, I was still you know it, it was a lonely time in a way so i was still living you know without my dad that's what it felt like. like yeah. I was living, but it was without him. So when, when I got married and I had a child, my daughter, Brooklyn, I would say it, dude, it reawoke me into like, you know, you can go to a dark place when, you know, bad things happen or, you know, unfortunate things happen. You go to a bad place a little bit, or, you know, not even a bad place, but a dark place. And then um, this beautiful little girl comes out, right? And it's yours. Yeah. And so it, it, it you know, it like gave me another life. It really did. It, it gave me a life to like be good all the way around for. And that's what did it. And now. Rookie cookie you know, game changer is what you're saying. By far. My, my, the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, and I think to answer your question, the best thing, right? So being an Olympian or, you know, winning some NCAA titles and things like that were my main goal, which at that age, it should be, uh, and not doing that. But, you know, I'd say my biggest accomplishment isn't, uh, you know, or isn't my degree, you know, my biggest accomplishment is, you know, my two kids and my wife, you know, I, I believe I have a great family and from the top down, uh, wife being at the top, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> top down. Um, all I ever wanted was uh, to stay in wrestling probably my whole life because I love the sport for me. It gives me energy, makes me feel good. Um, and then I'm able to help a lot of people, um, you know, just doing what I do uh, and knowing what I know and coming out of that, um, I love. You know, as far as coaching, wrestling's for me. The workout is all for me. The training and everything, that's it's really all for me. I mean, I, I get excited of learning new things in wrestling um, for me, like adding to my toys. Um, and then giving is, uh, it, you know, is a reward that, you know, you only really know until – you know, you help those in the coaching and, and it's not necessarily your national champions at all. You know, it's hard, you know, a guy like Joey Davis, I, I feel like I gave a lot, but I don't know how much wrestling I really gave him. <laughs> yeah. I think Joey Davis is going to win where he went, wherever he went. I, I do too. I do too. But, you know, I think the difference is, um, would he have made it four years anywhere else? Sure. And he's he really the question. Did he finally he finally graduated from Notre Dame College? Yes, that, he did. That that's huge. That that to me, like, you know, yeah. you know, hey. he's face punching now, right? He's face kicking and face punching. And but he don't have to. He don't have to, exactly. He Joe doesn't have to. Correct. Yeah. He's a 
he's a very smart uh, guy. He's always a super smart guy. Um, most people don't get the luxury to talk to him one on one or hang out with him for a full night. And I think anybody that does, you know, sees the professional um, intelligence that he does have. You, you know. No. Well, I'm hi, buddy. It's Thomas. Thomas is a piece of work. Hey, Tom. Tom, get in here. Come on, Thomas. I see all your YouTube stuff or your Facebook stuff. Now, yeah. did you go to uh, Chagrin Falls, Thomas? Yeah, Thomas. Thomas loves Chagrin Falls. His brother really loves it. Hey, we were at uh, Euclid Creek yesterday. Are you? Yeah. We were there. Yeah. Now. We're, Dude, you, you go to some. So. So yeah, you say I, I got some inspiration. You got some inspiration from me, but uh, I definitely get inspiration from you too, Zeb. You know, being a father of of young children and and you know knowing you know I can remember sitting next to you at the Ohio State tournament when I believe I was just the head coach at Walsh, and you were there. I think just starting, um, you know, with the interview and and, and flow and and things like that. And I sat next to you. So, I mean, just talking. And I don't think we we definitely have kids back then. Um, but to now. So it's like, man, we knew each other back then, you know. Uh, and now, you know, with the kids and stuff. And, you know, I see at even your house, you know, you, you made a nice home for your, for your family. Um, yeah, it, you got a real nice house down there in Brimfield, dude. Yeah, I'm lucky. You know, to be honest, all I ever wanted was a couple uh, national championships uh, and, a, <laughs> and a nice house. I, I, my entire life, I just wanted to live in a nice house of my own. But you, and, do, uh, you have a bunch of national championships. You've won, you've won the JUCOs, right? You won the JUCOs. You won the Junior Nationals, right? You guys were national champions of the team at Walsh. So you've yep. won a bunch of national titles. Maybe you didn't win NCAA titles, but okay. Why? What was the fork in the road with uh, with with fighting? NAAFS. Why are you not a professional face puncher? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're, uh, you're ability level driven, all of it. You're you know you NAAFS is the league Stepe started it. Correct, Jessica. I yeah. I mean uh, Stepe and who lives uh, out there, Jason. She lives in Portage County, doesn't she? She's from Portage County. Yeah, yeah she's Rootstown, from Rootstown, right? Rootstown, Yeah, But uh, I believe she lives in uh, – well, I know she lives in Vegas now. Yeah. She moved to Vegas. But she's, she's so, Portage County. Yeah, she is. And I helped train her a little bit, you know, for um, like three fights. Uh, train her pretty, you know, pretty good there. But uh, why, why am I not? That's a good question. Um, I struggled with that internally, you know, for a long time. Not struggled, but it's not what I was supposed to do. I mean, I got all the skills, all the skills. Um, I remember, you know, fighting the NWFS when, you know, Uriah Faber was real big in the WEC. And the way I looked at it, you know, was – was, you know, it was probably me and Uriah Faber, the two baddest at that time. I wasn't on that level as far as stardom or anything, but uh, I think ability, I definitely had that ability. Why didn't I? I would say backing, support, and probably my last little bit of screw you to the establishment, right? Kind of that last little, I'm going to do it by myself. I don't need anybody, and I don't want anybody's help. And, uh, you know, finishing out my 20s, you know, I think I just had to learn that. And I, I went from basically 16 years old to about 26 of me. And I didn't really care what people thought or did or, you know, I was, I'm always a good person. You know, I don't think there's too many people out there, hopefully, say like, hey, you know, he's just not a good person. Um, I mean, I, I, I believe I'm a good person. Uh, you know, first thing I try to do is get up and pray 
and uh, before I go to bed. And, you know, so those old fashioned, you know, things I've always carried, but, <clears throat> you know, my persona, maybe out to the public for those 10 years were, you know, I really didn't need anybody. I didn't want anybody. And I think that was just uh, an aftermath, you know, from my father uh, and, and how that went. And then when I met my wife, um, Tiffany, and, and you know, thought, okay, I, I can't be like this. I, I want to, you know, get married and, and things like that. And I got to give to her, uh, you know, more than I'm going to give to myself. And, you know, I got to shut my mouth. <laughs> too, uh, when, you know, I could have just been talking uh, and, and backed it up. So I learned a lot from that and she taught me a lot. So, and then our child, you know, Brooklyn and, and now Jagger. So yeah, from, you know, for those 10 years, it was, you know, I, I think if somebody would have picked me up, you know, and, and they tried, it was just a little too late. Dan Henderson actually uh, reached out to me uh after my last fight and uh team quest uh out there and i was getting ready to walk into the cbca wrestling room and, and and get a workout and i'm sitting in the parking lot and dan henderson and uh, another coach called me three-way and and actually you know invited me out to oregon and uh, at the time and, and the train out there with Team Quest and, and all them. And I had to deny it. You know, I said, I man, <laughs> this is, must be my luck because, you know, I can't do it. Uh, my wife at the time was three months pregnant. And I said, you know, and I, I talked to her and she told me to go. She actually said, go. She goes, because I don't want to be with you and have you sit here 10 years later saying, hey, I regret it. You should have did that. I should have went. So it was ultimately my decision. And uh, I decided, I, I believe, to stay and grow up and, 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 and be an adult <laughs> more, right? Yeah. As they said. Um, so, sorry, my wife's so. scooping old Thomas up here. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, we got the same house. So here's my favorite thing. You have, like, zero regrets about that. That's what I love. I have zero. I love it. Because, like, so zero. many people, like, I have no regret. a professional face puncher, and there's not – I don't know if there's any more who – a person who's more built for it than you. I agree. I agree. And, I, I mean, to be honest, I boxed uh, this morning. You know, boxing, like I told you, when I was 16 and – and my father passed away and I was kind of on this high journey, right? In high school, I was doing pretty good and I was, you know, being praised. And, uh, you know, that was early nineties and Mike Tyson was still, you know, top dog. And so I, I kind of wanted to be like that, you know, like the Mike Tyson. And I, I believe I kind of was. And then, uh, you know, I just didn't have the money or backing. <laughs> and then, so I like that you don't have any regrets about it. And I, I, you know, I don't hear like you talk about fighting all the time. You're not like some guy who's like super into following and jocking the UFC, even though that you're, you're, you can still go train with those guys is the crazy thing about it. Cause you, you I got, trained last, right. You went out and trained with Joey, didn't you? Yeah. I trained with AJ McKee, Joey Davis, um, um, you know, Tone, the head coach, uh, AJ's father. Uh, Mr. McKee and fight at like 50 something, didn't he? Like two or three years ago, dude, he took me down. Hey, he hit me with a dump. So I went out there, I, I trained with the 185 Bellator champ. Um, uh, thought I did okay with him, and you know, trained with Joey and AJ McKee. Um, trained with those guys, sparred a little bit with those guys, definitely wrestled, and then, um, uh, and then, uh, Tone the head coach of body shop. Um, I was like, Hey, let's roll. <laughs> you know, and he's 52, 50, yeah. you know, 51 years old. Is his, and kid's still undefeated? his kid's undefeated. Right. And, and Joey's undefeated. Yep. So um, me and him rolled. Yeah. I just, I got a great experience out there. I mean, my goal is to be able to roll. You know, I, I still watch Dan Gable 
and see what he's doing at his old age. And uh, that's my goal is to be able to hit punching bags when I'm, you know, 65. Um, get up I, and, when, and kind of resort back to what my coach said. Hey, you know, as a freshman in high school said, hey, you know, you're going to be a wrestling bum. But not in that way, not in the bumps uh, way, more of the uh, back then it was kind of like the Dave Schultz, the Schultz, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People, people is the, do wrestling for a living train yeah. into their 30s and even their 40s. I, yeah. I feel bad because when we say wrestling bum and I say wrestling hobo, I'm not saying I, people who are losers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying people were drug addicts, people were felons. That's not what I'm saying. What not I'm at all. No. These are people that like they're – as John Stutzman says, POWs, prisoners of wrestling. These are people who cannot get away from the sport. And I don't think it's a negative. I'm not, it, it feels like it's derogatory. It can be. Say it. it can be. Yeah. It, it can, can be. be. But, um, you know, I, at the I same think time, that they, you didn't do that though. You, you took another path. You took another path when you, in your late thirties with two kids and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you, you, because you to be the head coach at Notre Dame College, you got to have a degree. I guess we should have. That's a barrier. That's a barrier in all the NCAA in, institutions to be any paid coach that's not volunteer. You have to have a degree. You got to have a four year. Yeah, a lot of institutions as well. You got to have a master's as well. Not oh, even God, just. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, being there, and luckily I started as a volunteer. You know, eight years ago, uh, started as a volunteer position and then uh i moved up to uh, a full-time position second assistant yeah and then uh head assistant and now head coach um you know like coming off the street more i don't think a lot of people would have that uh ability to do uh one not have a degree in going coach and two you know some of them can't even go into coach uh, just with a bachelor degree um but uh, yeah, you know, just fortunate, who fortunate. You who brought you in? How'd the connection start with Notre Dame College with you? Who brought you in? Anthony, one of the guys on the team. Who brought you in? How did you make the connection with Notre Dame College? Well, I think my light bulb went off. I know when my light bulb went off, it, it was uh, Nate Skenesny was going to Iowa, right? So uh, his dad, Mark, uh, called me up and he's like, Hey, uh, what are you doing Friday? Kind of gig. You want to uh, go with me uh, up to Iowa and take Nate up to school? And I was like, Yeah, you know, that'd be awesome. Uh, and I, at the time, I was working landscaping. So I was working landscaping at the time. Got off work on that Friday, went with Mark and Nate uh, to Iowa. Um, and dropped him off at the dorms for for the uh, orientation deal. Uh, sat, so I then went into uh, Tom and Terry Brands' office, talked with those guys a little bit. And uh, that's when my light bulb went off. To be honest, I uh, looked at Tom and, at his office and I'm looking around and I'm just seeing how he interacts. And when I left there, in my own head, I go, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. Not that what they're doing, but as a as far as a head coach, I could I can coach. I can do this. Um, so I went home, worked next the following week. Uh, my loophole was a guy named uh, Garrett Linton that I helped coach a little bit at Richtown High School, and then he went to uh, Notre Dame. So at work, I call up Garrett Linton and I said, hey, what's, uh, you know, uh, who's your, what's the coaches up there? I, I know them, but, you know, what's, what's their numbers? You know, Anthony Ralph gave me Anthony's number. I didn't have it at the time. And, and uh, Frank, you know, Romano. So I said, all right, give me Coach Romano's phone number as well. I kind of know him a little bit. And I know Alan, you know, he's a pretty smart guy. So if somebody's going to know how to coach in college, it would probably be Frank Romano. So he gave me uh, Frank's phone number. And, you know, as I'm raking, 
I call up Frank, you know, Frank, Sonny Marchetti, how you doing? And ask them a simple question. Coach, how do I become a college coach? What do I got to do? And he's like, well, you got to get a degree and boom, boom, boom. And, you know, kind of went through some stuff. And I was like, all right, uh, sounds good. Appreciate it. Got off the phone, called my wife and said, hey, you know, what's that online school? Online of Phoenix, Arizona, or, you know, online Phoenix, yeah. right? So we started looking into that. Uh, I started looking in, being, you know, at that time in my 30s, and I had a, a family uh, just starting. So I'm like, man, I should probably you know, get college for cheap at this point, take out some loans and go that route. Well, it was that night when Anthony Ralph called me and he's like, Sonny, dude, do you want to coach here? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I go, what do I got to do? And he said, well, you know, uh, let me talk, but I think I can get you in. And I was like, all right, cool. So he's like, uh, I was like, well, what's the pay? Cause I was, I didn't want to, you know, landscape anymore. <laughs> and he's like, you know, probably about 35. And I was like, okay, got off the phone. I was like, all right, honey, you know, it's going to be about 35. I could probably do that. I'll work some money on the side or, you know, train and this and that. So I could, you know, make some money and, and do that. So then talk to Anthony the next day. And uh, he's like, no, that was 3,500. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a volunteer. <laughs> he's like, you're a volunteer and it's only 3,500. And then you know how uh, that goes. And that gets dropped down because you're a volunteer when you're actually paid out. It's about 2000 Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I was like, you know what? This is my only in. I'm going to have to stay landscaping and volunteer and, and do that. So I was able to do that. I worked, volunteered, and did construction. And, um, you know, there was a full-time open job when – uh, Jake Pataxel left, and I was in, so I went from there. Dude, yeah. you did a full. How long did you do a full time manual labor job, and then go wrestle in the afternoon? How long did you do that for? Ooh, ooh, in my thirties. You know that was all the way into my thirties. I remember Garrett Weinberger. Uh, So, yeah, Garrett Leinberger. So I was 36 because we were jogging at practice. And I was jogging with him at the beginning of practice. All right, start jogging. I'm jogging. And Garrett Leinberger, uh, you know, he's, he's out stretching. He's holding. He's slowing things up. So I go over to him, and I'm like, hey, let's go, dude. Pick it up. You know, let's go. And he's like, hold on, man. I'm getting... You know, I'm kind of beat up. I go, how old are you? And he's like, I'm 18. I said, well, what's double that? Now get the heck, you know, I said some different words, but <laughs> now get the freak up and run, dude. I was like, that's how old I am. Double your age, and that's how old I am. Let's go. You're so he got up. Dad. You're old enough to be his dad. I love it. Yeah, so uh, I would say I probably did that. Uh, last year was my first year I did not wow. because of head coach. I knew I'd make my change over. So it was kind of a bittersweet in my head. I knew my, my throw the sweatpants on with the team and jog with the team, you know, and kind of go through the vibe is, is kind of coming to a final end of my life. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to direct the ship. And I love it. You know, I've learned a different way. I've tried to research what a lot of coaches do, talk to a lot of coaches, because I got to get mine out too. You know, I, I don't think I'll never not be able to get mine out. So, you know, guys like uh, Jim Miller, right, from Warburg, um, I had the luxury of uh, talking with him for a little bit at a leadership committee. Uh, guys like that, obviously Dan Gable and, um, you know, guys my age, like Kale Sanderson, I try to find as many videos on him coaching as I can, even though there aren't very many. There's not very many videos of that guy coaching. 
No, and I've tried to research everything I can. Uh, so, you know, from him to, uh, you know, the uh, best football team out there, you know, the Patriots and uh, Tom Brady, right? Tom Brady's 40, 41? Oh, no, Tom Brady's older than that, dude. He's 42. So what am I doing? So he still jogs with his team. Yeah. Why the heck can I jog with my team? Coach, though. <laughs> huh? He's not the head coach, though. No, now I can't. No, Play. no. He's playing no. rounds. Um, okay. Right. So, so just real quick, your brother John. Mm -hmm. Your brother John was a state champ for North Kent Hoover, right? Correct. 91. 91. And how much – is John seven years, six years older than you? About seven. Close to seven years, yeah. John did a non-traditional thing. Where did he go right out of the gate? Did he go to Tri-C? Where did he go right out of, out of high school? Minnesota. So he went to Minnesota right out. And, okay. John yeah. had this crazy journey, and then he came back as a 30-year-old and won the NCAA. 30. He was 30 years old, and he won the NCAA mm -hmm. for Augsburg, right? Yes. And it, it's kind of like – I don't know if a lot of non-traditional students have done what John Marchetti's done. No, not a lot at all. You know, I mean, just to go back to school, uh, it's tough enough, like you said, at that. And uh, then to compete uh, is another, you know, animal altogether. So, yeah, I, I think our family, you know, I, you know, I never looked at it like that until maybe you just said that. But, you know, I think there is, as a whole, the, the guys, you know, in my family, uh, probably had about a seven, eight year, I would say a hard run just because, uh, you know, our, our father passing, uh, so young and that direction, right? I mean, you got my older brothers, I got two older brothers. I'm the youngest in the family. And, um, everybody was kind of like, not sure what's going on. He was so, you know, prevalent in our family, right? as the dad of the home. Uh, yeah, I, I think we all kind of just took a different route. And then, you know, probably about six, seven years later, kind of woke up again and was like, all right, well, he won't want that. Uh, my family won't want that. And, uh, you know, it's never too late. So I'm done feeling sorry for myself. I'm done, you know, uh, you know, taking my life maybe the other direction when, you know, the whole time I know what I got to do in the right direction. So if I know what to do in the right direction, it's just time for me to follow it. And, you know, like I said, for me, it was, you know, me, my wife and, um, you know, having my kids. Is John, you and John are still pretty close. John still comes and hangs out at the house and mm -hmm. you live in like Akron or something like that. Yep. Yep. So, and he yeah, so yeah, we're super close. You know, we've always been close. Um, you know, especially after my dad, he was my main coach, uh, all the way through and, um, you know, and, and we've had a lot of great times too. Even when I went out the last and, um, he actually went out there as well and was coaching and then got picked up. So that's, that's how he got picked up. Uh, that's, that's a crazy story, which is uh, we're out at last. Augsburg was re so we're out at last and in California. My brother is there as a GA or not GA, but uh, uh, you know, a volunteer coach. And then uh, Augsburg coach Jeff Swenson called looking for a 25 pounder, and Jose Sanchez, our 25 pounder, that was a national champ for us uh, that year. Uh, so I wasn't the only national champ from last and uh, on that card our 25 pounder pinned in the finals Jeez. uh but yeah he, he's a tough dude so uh and i just spoke to him the other day it was, it was pretty cool so but he's out there and augsburg coach calls and says hey you know what's going on with jose and look for 25 and they said hey uh we got another 25 you might want to consider and you know he, he's coaching out here and, and that was my brother John was smaller than you. Is that was small? He was a weight. I didn't realize that. Yeah. What did he win? Yeah, he's at? 33. I was going to say, yeah, he didn't win it at 25, right? No. So he was always a weight class or two smaller, you know, than me. But, um, yeah, he got picked up there and, you know, went to Augsburg and, and won a national title that next year.
Did he get a degree? Did John did no. ever get a degree? No, no. So he stayed there. Got a, won a national title, um, and I believe he's got probably a little more than a semester. Last time we talked, um, to finish his degree, which he's an art major. I think you can be an artist without a degree. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. I'm, yeah, he. I'm sorry. <laughs> For real, and he is, uh, you know, really good, really smart with, you know, electronics and and all types of stuff. I mean, he comes in, hooks up my surround sound, and um, he just brought a a go kart over the house. Just what you want for your four year old I, son, three year old son. We already ripped the wheel off. We were flying down the road, and the wheel fell off. <laughs> But yeah, we do stuff like that. He, he don't have any. He doesn't have any kids, so he kind of you know lives through mine, which is which is cool. But you know, some of the things he brings over for them, you know, they're you know they're a little bit too old. Uh, hey, the is, things he, are. is is John Marchetti the Funkle? Yeah. Is he the fun uncle? Yeah. I was that for a really long time, though. My nieces and nephews. I was the Funkle. I thought. Yeah. No, he is. He he does. Uh, he builds also. You you ever see those whizzers and uh, the bicycles that have the two strokes and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we fly around with those. That's our that's our fun gig, dude. Uh, okay, I a question I've been having and like what I, I I saw the picture of the old the '97 Walsh team posted. Mm -hmm. And would you guys have six finalists, five champs? Yep. And most and you guys were national champs, and most people consider that one of the greatest teams ever in the history of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Do you still have contact with those guys? Yeah. And uh, Heskett. Well, go ahead. And you know, what's that contact like and what was it like being on a team like that? Uh contact wise, you know, Heskett, um, you know, my heart goes out for him. Mm. It just uh, for him and his family right now, uh, just having a stroke and, and battling through that. So, uh, yeah, talking with them, I, I can't really talk, uh, reach out and, you know, uh, touch on that. And we just had our 20 year reunion last year, I believe, or two years ago, maybe now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two years ago, uh, had our reunion and, you know, was able to really see the, everybody in person. Jeff Nup and and everybody, so that was really neat. Um, yeah, I mean, we keep in contact on different media's. Uh, you know, me and Heskett are probably, I would say, a little more closer than some of the guys, just because of wrestling still. Yeah. Uh, so we try He's to talk. In Ohio, but, you're in Ohio. Yep. Where's where uh, is Jeff Nup in like Texas? Texas, yep. He is he's pretty much like an oil tycoon in in Texas. Yeah, and where's Brad Byers at? So I believe he's in North Carolina. He's in North Carolina. Where's Vic? So he, Vic in New York City? Vic is everywhere. Vic, uh, he was out in Colorado. I think he still lives out in Colorado unless he moved to New York. Is he still doing – he was a movie producer. Is that what he's still doing? The last thing, and then I think he was singing. I think it's, he's got like a music group. Vic, Vic, Vic's a different – he's a different cat. Different cat. So, what was it like? Uh, normal. It was normal. I think maybe from the outside it might not look normal, but we were all a bunch of, you know, we, we – just like a melting pot, right? I mean, I was originally a North Canton uh, guy and, and then came in there, but – you know, all grew up through North Akron, so I was right in the mix right away. Um, you know, Brad Byers came from Hudson, uh, I believe his senior year. Um, and, you know, Vic Sveda, uh, he came from uh, Hudson too, right? Or... Where's Vic from? Woodridge. I think. Woodridge. Woodridge. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So he came. So when, when Vic came in, I was his drill partner. What? Yeah. I beat the living crap out of Vic every day, Fifth, every day. Fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I wrestled with him every day. And then my buddy, my college roommate, the oddball, 
the, the 500 wet dog sophomore, Nate Doggerty. Dude, he, was, he, he has the worst record for a state finalist still to this day. Did you know that? No. Nate was 16 and 14, and he made the state finals. Wow. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, Nate. No, I didn't know that. Nate was 500, no. dude. He beat the Ravenna guy in the semis. He won the quarters to go 500. And then he wrestled uh, James Holmes, 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 right? Beat the defending champ in the semis. Yeah. And then he wrestled, I forget. He was 500 in the finals. He was 16. He was uh, 16 and 13 going to the state finals. And then he lost. He was 16 and 14 on the air. You know, for me, I only can, you know, probably talk for me which is, you know, when my experience there, I, I was still a, a loner kind of person, which means you know, even on the team, I really didn't, uh, I don't want to say associate, but, you know, I, I did my thing in the wrestling room, in the practice room, and, you know, outside the wrestling room, you know, I was, I don't think those guys hung out with me, <laughs> uh, you know, too much. So do you, think, do you think okay so here's the here's the million dollar question. Do mm -hmm. you think as you're into being a dad and the quote unquote loner, wild man, lost person, do you think all this stuff stems from your dad dying? Do you think that, that like the losing your dad as a 15 year old, a 16 mm -hmm. a 16th birthday, do you think that that's where it all stems from? Now you're all in on being a dad, you're you were a loner and you couldn't figure things out for 10, 12 years of your life. Mm -hmm. You think that's what it all stems from? I think so. I really do because, uh, you know, me and him were really close uh, growing up, right, to, to almost 16 years old. And, you know, you're, you're kind of – I was kind of at a, you know, you know, not at the peak, but I believe I was pushing the peak uh, of becoming a really top wrestler in the country. Um, you know, wrestling Guerrero in the finals, and I went to all the cadet world team trials and, you know, stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, when he passed away, there was a huge void uh, in my life, at, in the home, too. And then uh, Walt Talarczyk, you know, retired and, and left and went to North Carolina. So, yeah, you know, there was a uh, – I think from there, I took a lot of lonely time that I don't think many kids did uh, back then. I mean, I remember sleeping in my car in the Walsh parking lot, uh, you know, in training. I mean, I did those things. You know, I'd hear stories of what, you know, college guys were doing when I was in high school. And I kind of had the ability not being, uh, you know, under watchful parents at the time that I could kind of do what I needed to do or do what I wanted to do. So I would do stuff like that. You know, I remember waking up, like I said, I'd park in a parking lot at Walsh Jesuit by myself and then wake up 536 in the morning and uh, go hit the stadium steps at Walsh Jesuit, you know, and I'd fill my book bag full of books to make it heavy and I would do the stadiums. And then I would bring out the uh, track and field equipment and then try to do workouts there. And then I'd go in when the school opened, I'd go into the locker room, into the football locker room, take my shower and then go to class. And I did that regularly uh, to where my coaches, you know, told me, be careful, you know, don't overtrain. And uh, I was just, you know, I, I just kind of, that's where I think myself, you know, it was like, all right, I'm in this, not by myself, but my wrestling journey now is me. I make the decisions and it, I could have easily chose not to, <laughs> you know, uh, really not having any, um, you know, buddy like that to tell me different. So, but I think I just told myself I could either, I don't know. I, I really didn't tell myself. It was more of this is the direction I'm going. I still can be the best. I can still, you know, uh, compete at the best. It, it was more of the other stuff that I think I needed at the time, which is 
the back, you know, stuff. Uh, not just being the competitor, but people behind the scenes uh, that help, right? You, can, I mean, just because the tiger is in the show, you got handlers to make sure the tiger is in the show. I don't think the tiger can set up the show and do the show and then leave. And that's kind of what I was, I was at. So you're, you're this unbridled wild man in your 20s. How'd you yep. never get in like big trouble? No felonies or how did, how did you avoid all that, man? Uh, like I said, you know, so having them pass early too, I think was a, maybe a, I, the one I take as a benefit is, you know, him passing early. I've always had him everywhere, everywhere. You know, I have my dad and, you know, I think I'm a, um, spiritual person like that to where, you know, uh, I believe I've been a pretty good person and, and that's, you know, number one. So I, I knew I'd be okay. I just didn't know how in the heck I was going to do anything. <laughs> you know, I, I knew I'd God and, you know, I read the Bible and, you know, I knew good things were going to come. It was just how long is, am I going to endure it and bear it until the fruits of the labor kind of come through. And, and it took a long time. <laughs> and still going, but uh, yeah, not getting in trouble. A lot of close calls. Uh, a lot of close calls, not not big ones, but you know, a lot of close calls. Uh, and then uh, the wrestling community, right? Just surrounding myself at any facet with the wrestling community. I mean, if I'm at a wrestling tournament or training, which I I've done, um, I'm not out, you know, doing whatever. So. Yeah, and then when my, you know, daughter was uh, born and, and my wife, that settled me down a whole lot to where, you know, I, I mean, I, I probably drink once, twice a year. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's probably been for the last 10 years of my life. Where, where did you go? You went from Lassen to Iowa State, right? Where did you go? What was your path? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I went from Lassen. Uh, we're we're going we're if you if this were a timeline and people were watching it it'd be all over we're all over after right. Lassen, after you're a junior college national champ I went to Iowa State yes did you compete two years in JUCO did you do three years in JUCO what'd you do in JUCO uh, just won my freshman year true freshman year I wrestled JUCO excuse me and uh, able to win it and then the next year I redshirted so and you were then, at Lassen and then. You were out after two years. Yep, yep. Went to Iowa State, competed for them uh, in 2000. And then, uh, you know, I think that was my, you know, like you said, how, how did you not break or, you know, something like that. I think that was my breaking point when I was at Iowa State. And, and, I, and you really needed the next level of either support, finance, um, you know, that's what I needed. And, you know, division one is a different animal in a way. Uh, so being as young as I was, you know, I was, and I was lucky to have, you know, guys like Kel Sanderson on my team, uh, seeing a lot of things that he had and, and, and did and, and the support, you know, what always struck me, but it was, I tell you what, this was a hard, this was real hard, was after practice at Iowa State, coming downstairs to the locker room, walking out of the locker room, and guys like, uh, you know, Kale, you know, his mom and dad were sitting on the bench waiting for him, getting ready to take him out to dinner or, you know, whatever. Um, and I just remember, you know, talking with them, hi and everything, and I'm just like, man, you know, none of these people have a clue, and I've never told anybody. This is the first time I've ever told anybody. But I'm like, man, you have a, you guys have no clue. I wrestled your son and my dad died that same hour. So wild, man. So you know what I'm saying? And in my head, as I walk out, I have a feel sorry for me attitude and and, and like like dude, how lucky. And, and and not putting it on him like ah, look at you. It was more of like good. That's what parent that's that's awesome. 
Like, that's awesome. So that's, you know, that was a couple of times in my life where I took snapshots. That was one of them. And I'm like, man, man, I would love to have that. So right? now you have kids that are like that. You have guys on your team who mm -hmm. have, no, they don't have either parent, right? You yeah, I, I, yep, exactly. What's that, what's that like? You can't be a, you got these two kids who you're the actual father to. You can only yep. be dad to so many kids, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I'll take them all. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll take them all. Um, and I think that's probably what carries me and my excitement, you know, and, and my true passion and motivation. Wrestling, you know, like I said, it's for me as far as learning new tactics and things like that. I still get a personal gratitude of, of uh, learning new stuff, uh, the grappling, the jujitsu or, or whatever. Uh, but as far as taking care of human beings in college, um, that's probably what I love the best. It's because that's right. What you don't have is what you, uh, you want to give. So I wasn't able to have that. And, you know, I have kids like that on my team and, you know, that's what, you know, that's what fuels me. I love it. For instance, Emilio Fowler is a kid on my team that just graduated. Uh, he was a starter on and off. Uh, never really hit the, the final starting spot, you know, going into regionals, nationals, but was always in there, always in the mix. Uh, came to Notre Dame and um, self-driven guy. You know, he, he's got a mom and I'm not sure where his father is, uh, but it kind of maybe a similar situation, right? And I see this kid and he's a good, humble kid, works hard, shows up to everything. And, uh, you know, summertime when I drive up there, most people are going home. You know, I see him past Beachwood Mall running with headphones on in the summer by himself. And he's a loner too. So talk with him and things like that. And, um, you know, a kid like that graduated this past uh, March. And he was so upset. His senior year, he was. He was deemed the starter until, uh, you know, Alonzo uh, decided to bump up at the end, had a final wrestle off, took a spot. So he's a senior. His one time to get on the stage, he got bumped out in the final wrestle off. And, uh, I mean, this kid's no punk kid either. You know, comes from, uh, I would say, the streets more. Uh, you know, Kansas. He's from Kansas. And... Uh, we had a practice after that, you know, it was a real early wrestle off, final wrestle off like nine in the morning and practice at 12 on a Saturday or a Sunday. Well, that kid was at the 12 o'clock practice after he lost his senior year, uh, his wrestle off. He was at practice at 12, head down, pissed off, but he was there on time. Uh, and then showed up to every practice after that to help the team. He was at our last practice on time. And, uh, you know, I really don't get too emotional when, you know, any of our guys win a national title. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I've been in, lucky to have been in a lot of those chairs, so maybe that helps. But a kid like this, you know, I did, you know, and, and I told him if, if we could do awards this year, which we can't, you know, I'd give him my own personal award, which is a Man of Honor award in which I think is higher than any award that I could give at Notre Dame, most improved or, you know, national champion, best wrestler or whatever. Man of Honor award means you honored yourself, you honored your family, you honored the team, and you, uh, you did everything. So I gave that to him, and, and he's a kid that I, I told him, I said, man, I look up to you. You know, you did something I didn't do. And you know, I was probably in a similar position and I could, I, you know, I didn't do it. And for, you know, somebody like you to come into a program, five years, wrestle for five years, go to college. And I believe he graduated with above a 3.0. He sent money home to his mom 
at, from doing work study. That's what it's all about, man. Like what you're saying about him, like the guy getting the degree, maybe you dude, know, I, the starter. Mm, but those are the guys that people. I get chills, dude. I get about. chills. Those are the people that I want to like, that I want to do wrestling media for. Those are the people whose stories I want to tell. Those are the people oh. who I want told. Like, like you're saying, everybody wants to see Co- uh, Kale Sanderson coach. Everybody right. wants to see him what do you, when he used to wrestle. They want to see how he trained, right? He yep. doesn't allow a lot of access. But mm-hmm. not a lot of people are talking about this guy. Was it mm-hmm. a follower? 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 Fowler, F O L or F O W L E R. Emilio Fowler. Um, from Kansas. From Kansas. And, uh, you know, uh, his heart was broken because he wasn't able to wrestle, you know, on that level or on the national tournament. And, I'm like, man, I'm over here almost crying because <laughs> I'm more proud of you than anybody. Did you tell you know? one of the guys? Did you like what did you did you tell the guy? Do they get yeah. it? Do you think they get it? It's tough, you know, you're 19, all you want to do is be a national champ. So it's probably tough for them to uh conceive of the full perspective of that, but you know, one of the hardest things to do, I believe, is go to college and wrestle and, and go to school and graduate all within the same whole thing. Yeah, but what um, about being a dad, coaching, getting a degree? I think that's – I think – and then pra- doing all the practices and doing everything everybody else is doing. I think that's the hardest thing you can do. Uh, yeah. Nah. I think I it's know. the hardest thing you can do already, man. I don't think that there's, like, a lot – you know, like obviously going off to war, okay, okay, right, right. Kids going to the D Day, who are getting off June well, 1944, I, I, right? okay. But I, I definitely got some, you know, goals ahead of me in coaching. That, you know, what's the hardest thing? Um, you know, it's not too easy winning a college national championship uh, as a team, and I've had the luxury of being on those and of coaching as well, but you know, as being the head coach and kind of being your program, uh, there's only three a year in NCAA that are crowned. (laughs) And you only have one per division, right? So, uh, you know, I was in control of me. And I think when I'm, you know, when I'm in control of me, I I get all my stuff done. So it's not too hard just because it's my daily basis. But I think it's harder to control the uncontrollables. And, uh, ultimately get all those people doing that same thing. That's tough. Uh, you know, we're built to get up and go to war, uh, especially I believe our time frame and our era uh, of, of, you know, of who we are at 40s and plus. Uh, you know, I, I know you get up and you either with your kids or doing something, you know, uh, you know, working on your house and something, you know, I'm doing something. I just don't lay around all day. We go do something. I got correct noon with kids. Uh, Sonny, yep. you know, speaking, yep. you said there's three titles given away a year, right? Mm-hmm. Kids. None this year. Yep. Talk me through that. Talk me through the Thursday. Cause you guys are a Friday, Saturday championship. You're in South Dakota this year. Mm-hmm. You guys found out, Thursday before you guys were all out in South Dakota ready to make weight. Yeah, we flew you out. Went, your your NSA tournament's canceled. Where was Sonny Marchetti <laughs> and where were, would you have eight qualifiers, seven qualifiers? What would you guys have? Uh, seven, right? Seven qualifiers. So we had uh, seven qualifiers. So, so we, uh, you're going to make a run at the team title. Your heavyweight's going to win it probably. 84, 84, or 97. Uh, Vizzetti, which, what weight's he? 84. 84. That guy's going to make a run. Okay. So, our, uh, up and down the lineup, you've got at least two to four guys that can win, win. Not like, eh, it's a bit of a stretch, Zeb, but in D2, you got two to four guys every year who can win it. Yeah. Hunter Bray, I believe, had a real good Hunter shot. Hunter Bray, well. there you go. 133 pounder, right? Like, he, T- Taylor Masuda took out the number one guy in the country in regionals. Trey Grind took him out yeah. seven to two. You guys got guys two to I said it two to four we're guys. Coming. We're coming. We were not going there. Yeah, we were going to win. Yeah, we were going to win the whole tournament. You won 
was 2018 or 2017 the year you guys won? It was kind of like, oh, I don't know if we were yeah. really supposed to win, but you won, right? Yeah. What and that was kind of our what was your that was kind of our mind that was kind of our mindset going into uh the past season as well. We left on a Wednesday, flew out on a Wednesday, got there, you know, worked out. And then uh Thursday, uh Thursday I had all types of meetings. Uh, but we set up our workout, I believe at like one o'clock. So get there. I had a meeting at noon. Uh did the meeting at noon went okay uh and then came out seeing the guys starting to practice i had to go into a two o'clock meeting and then a three o'clock so that's where the coaches have the meetings but so in our final meeting three o'clock meeting uh they gave the wristbands for parents or parents uh, or family members per kid right yep so did all that you know still I would say it was 70% go, 30% obviously could be shut down at any time. Uh, but as far as that point, it was still go. Uh, so I came out of the meeting in the venue, uh, came out, and the guys just got done uh, working out, just got done. Everybody's on weight. Last official practice before weigh-ins at, you know, uh, 7 o'clock the next morning. So... Now timeline, it's three o'clock. I get out of the meeting, got the bands in my hands, got a couple parents even on the floor watching practice. Get done, gather up all the guys. Uh, hey guys, we're still good, positive, everything. Hand out the hand bat, uh, bracelets. Go back to the hotel. So we go back to the hotel and uh, everything's still good. And uh, send the coaches to Walmart to get some groceries for after weigh-ins for the next day. It's now about 4, four o'clock, 4.30. And then uh, when those guys went, me and the athletic trainer went and had lunch or uh, dinner kind of deal. And, Michael uh, Heichel, my guy, Michael Heichel. Michael Heichel, dude. Hey, he's one of the key reasons why Notre Dame wins. Michael Heichel, he's the real deal. I like him. Dude, he's the man. He is the man. So me and Mike, we go down to the, you know, have a burger and, and kind of chill out. And all the other coaches are in there and wrestlers in the area and everything. We're watching the TV and seeing basketball, uh, NBA get canceled and everything like that. And we're supposed to be on an email basis to see if we get canceled or not. So I, I would say up until about 530, everything was good. And then we're sitting in the. Uh, hotel and and a couple coaches start murmuring and and everything like that and they're like hey Marchetti it's over and then you know my phone ding dings for uh, email and look at the thing and it's over it's over canceled so now my work really begins so now coaching I don't want to say it's easy because it's not, uh, but I believe my heart is part of coaching. When I say coaching, I mean like wrestling, setting up practices. It's what I've done my whole life. The hardest part is it really began then. So in my head, I have to take about out what I personally want to accomplish in wrestling this year, being first year of a head coach, uh, trying to push for a national title. So I got to take that out. I am no nothing. Uh, what Sonny Marchetti wants to do does not matter. I have to figure out how to contain eight, seven, eight kids with their dreams, parents that are there, and then a hotel full of kids that are in the same boat. And now you got that, you have a hotel bar, right? You got alcohol. Uh, you got, <laughs> I'm going, okay, okay. If you are truly a coach, you'll be able to get these kids home safe and sound. That's my only care. So I gathered all my guys. Right when I got that, I text everybody. I said, hey, me in room 304. Um, everybody ran up there. I said, hey, got news. Because I really didn't want them to hear it from, you know, everybody else. I want them to hear it from me. Um, you know, so gathered everybody, brought them into my room, 
broke the news. You know, a lot of kids were crying and hearts broken. And, and at the time, I'm like, man, I can't even cry or even go in with them at this point because I got to be on the outside making sure I'm that figure that, you know, is, is steady for them. Yeah. So, you know, we'll figure it out. Please, guys, stay together. Uh, you know, don't go off by yourself. You need something, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we're going to meet again. Right. So now through the rest of the night, I'm trying to set meetings uh, so they don't go off in the city and go go haywire. Yeah. And, and get in trouble or, or what have you. Uh, so I try to set a couple more meetings. We all meet. And then it's like, well, let's all meet and go out to dinner. You guys, you know, don't have to make weight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we all went to dinner, uh, invited the parents, sat down, had a nice dinner uh talked and you know cried it out a little bit there and then when we came back um i did something that you know i thought was pretty neat so i, I we were gonna me and the coaches we're gonna surprise the guys with singlets they had no clue so we got the new you know national gear form and everything and in the whole year we had bought nike singlets and never told showed anybody except for the three coaches the only people that knew so we wanted to break them out at nationals without even the guys knowing the morning of nationals, right? To give them another kick. Yeah. So unfortunately that didn't happen. And me and the coaches are talking. We're like, dude, what are we going to do about all these brand new singlets? You know, that stinks. So I'm like, you know what? Let's bring everybody down. Uh, th they're getting the singlets. So I brought them down. Uh, to the lobby and had the parents and you know that was probably one of the tougher things which was uh you know i, I brought air, each kid in you know hunter bray here's your singlet uh and presented them their singlet like you know they were the national champions uh you know that was and they didn't know so when they seen those singlets they were just you know hearts were just torn torn so away. Bray and Vizzetti don't come back. They're done. Bray does come back. Vizzetti. Bray, uh, Vizzetti's done. Alonzo Turner, um, he's done. He was a Wait, senior. Wait, is, is he a Harvey guy? Yeah. I teach at Red Rock. Right? He's Harvey. They're, it's the neighbors. It's a mile from my school. Yeah. So Alonzo Turner uh, came a senior year. Uh, he's done. Uh, Jordan Tagg who is our 65, who I believe had a good shot to do well uh, at the national tournament as well, uh, was a senior. So we had three seniors on there. But I, I gave them all a singlet uh, in the keep, right? Usually you just give them to your seniors for the senior gift and all that. But I just thought that was, you know, we either give them for seniors or, or national champions. Can you shoot me a picture of one of those? I don't even need to post it on social media. I just want to see it. Dude, stay right there. Oh, right. we're going to get to see it. All right. Love it. Let's see what Sonny's got. There. He's got a lot going on there. Dude, and it was the first in school to go this route. It was our first black singlet. Ooh. That's – ooh, I like that. So – What's the back? Just black? Oh, no. Names? Our lo Dude, our new team little logo. Bring me that logo in. I want to see the logo. Oh, that's sweet, man. That's Team NBC. Yeah, we all got one to keep. I'm like, you know what? This is going to be a, a precedented year that people talk about for a long time. And, you know, I, I just thought it was important for those guys. They just felt so gypped. And I tell you what, I can only speak for my guys. They train, they train to be national champions. And you know what that feels like. You know, they were training to be team national champions, training to be individual national champions. And not just training, but I believe each and every one of their mindset was about 99.99999% that they were actually going to do it. So with that mindset, they all got their heart broken. Yeah. Broken. 
you know, not just, hey, I didn't get my national tournament, but, you know, we had a collective goal that I believe they were like, man, I, I really wanted to win this national title for the team. Um, so we were at that point to where each person was like, man, I want to do this for the freaking team. Not just the, you know, 10 guys that traveled, uh, you know, but for the entire team, for everybody at home, for all the wrestlers at home from Notre Dame. I think we did a great job of keeping everybody together, the whole team, uh, the whole year, uh, down to the last practice. You know, our last practice was 35 plus kids, you know, screaming, celebrating on that Tuesday, you know, I think we're going to come back with a freaking trophy. Yeah. You know, that was our feeling. So, you know, when it got canceled, I think all their, you know, not just personal hopes and dreams, but like, you know, being on that national team forever to where I think 20 years from now, you know, I, like you said, I, I talked to, you know, TJ Williams or Reggie Wright that were with me on those teams 20 years ago. And we always have that, you know, you always have that. Me and Heskett and, and, and the, the, the Walsh Jesuit class just showed up there. Those guys, I don't care what time and point in my life or where I am. Uh, if I see any of those guys or talk to them, it's, We've won national titles together, state titles together. So, and that's kind of the dream that I was, you know, helping them with is, hey, you know, this is why it's so important to train so hard and do what we're doing because, you know, this is going to be for a lifetime. Uh, next year is going to be a wild year. We never know what they're going to do next year with any of it, if we're having a season or not, man. It's just, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't, at this point, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know if, like, it's productive to really have a, because we're so unsure what they're opening up, yep. second wave, whatever's going to – I don't even know what to say at this point. You know what I mean, Sonny? I agree. Uh, you know, things change so much every day. And, you know, it's getting harder and harder, I think, to control what you can control, right? Yeah, really. That's what we're all taught. Yep. That, I think that's what we're all taught. So, you know, only control what you can control. And, and right now, we can't control what we can control. And whatever we can control can change on a daily basis. Yeah, they move the goalpost a lot. You know, yeah. You know, we're, so, we're open up what we're not going to open up. It's just, it's wild. And, and wrestling, I feel, is it's very easy to target wrestling because it's a contact sport and you're in such close proximity. Uh, I agree. You know, and, you I know, it's. Say, you know, I mean. It, it's tough and you know what what we can do right now and um you know i just look at this as kind of that downtime you know there's going to be something big at the end of this for us uh and you know in the meantime i just tell my guys and we, we meet regular basis on the zoom like this and and we try to keep things fun you know we'll, we'll do new techniques uh, or the coaches show techniques but um, getting up and working out and, you know, only control what you can control. And that's why probably I get up every day and work out because I'm like, I don't know what the world's going to bring after nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Control the controllables, be positive, right? Like you want to be positive. Yeah. Control, and, uh, control for the time you can control it. Right. Like, that's it. <laughs> like hiking, like we're going to do here in a little bit. Um, okay. Yep. We're going to wrap up here. We've been on almost two hours. <laughs> awesome, man. It's been great talking. I, yeah. It's been great I'll, talking. I, I'll, I try not to – and uh, I do apologize on on live, right, or online here that, uh, you know, I know you I, – I was reached out a couple times on my thoughts right after, you know, the the national tournament was canceled right at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and I didn't answer a lot of those calls because I just wasn't ready. Um, I think the talk on it, uh, had a lot of motion. Um, and, and I'm glad I did it just because there was a lot of things that have changed since then. So, you know, some things I backed, you know, a month ago, month and a half ago that have changed. Uh, and other things I didn't back that are probably, you know, what's going on now. So, you know, I did hold off on, on some of those and, um, you know, and, and a lot of that was just to make sure my team aftermath was okay 
Uh, I didn't want to say anything about seniors not yet getting another year or, you know, anything on that because, you know, it was all spectacle. It was all spectacle. Nobody knows if seniors are going to get a year to come back or, uh, or what have you. My opinions on all of that um, were across the board. Yeah, so, and the speculation as to whether they were going to get another year or not. They're giving the spring sport ones another year. They're not giving your guys another year. It's just mm -hmm. wild, man. Wild stuff. Um, are you guys going to the skate park today? Yes. What skate He's park? Been you go to Cuyahoga Falls? Where do you go? Yeah, we go to Cuyahoga Falls. We go to Akron Skate Park, Cuyahoga Falls. Um, I'd say Akron's our big one because uh, not too many people go there. It's kind of on a private uh, area. I mean, it's open to anybody, but I just don't think a lot of people know about it too, too much. Secluded. Or well, uh, what's that? Secluded, an area that people just don't know about. Correct. So we go there. Cargo Falls is cool. And, you know, we're going to be moving up to the Akron area or Cleveland area. Uh, but yeah, skate, you know, controlling what you can control. Skate park. Skate park. There you go. All right. I got a scooter. <laughs> Okay, hey, I got to send you some of the new stuff. Oh, yeah. New stuff. That's the new one. We got to okay. get – you got to – next time I see you or if I'm uh, up at that Euclid Creek, I got to bring you some new stuff, the new defense stuff. Obviously, the uh, new logo. It's still the same I was say the, product. The I packaging looks awesome. The packaging looks fierce. Yes, they, they changed the game. Now, another thing, if I have one – I, I don't want to wear these, but Barbarian Apparel made me. No way. This is for my kids. These are youths. These are youths. That's awesome. So I'm going to have to give you one for your, you and your kids. Yeah. But they, Barbarian Apparel and Josh Sassby made me some of those. So I'd like to so shout out to my partners at the end of these uh, conversations, Sonny. But, hey, you got anything else for me? We good? We're good, brother. Uh, you know, I hope we talk uh, the next time uh, this way as far as, uh, you know, talking during the wrestling season. Uh, if not, I hope to see you in person, hopefully before then. But, yeah, you know, hopefully we're talking during the wrestling season and maybe a pre-season opener kind of gig. And, you know, anybody watching this, the only thing I would probably promote would be, you know, my program. Uh, go to Notre Dame Facebook page. We're doing fundraisers. We're doing a 5K run uh, coming up, uh, fundraiser for Notre Dame. And, uh, yeah, you know, we try to promote that we want to keep the sport moving. Um, so check out the Notre Dame Facebook page and see what we're doing. We're always doing something, you know, fun. Are you answering the question a lot, what, where's Notre Dame College? Is that the Fighting Irish? Do you answer that question a lot? Yeah. and it. I tell you what, uh, depends on where I'm at. I kind of go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. And who's asking the question? I've been in airports before and, you know, like, oh, Notre Dame, they're back in the AC, AC, ACC and all that or this, you know, I don't even know football talk, but I'm like, I'll just raise it up and be like, you know, okay. Not even worth fighting the fight sometimes. No, it was a falcon, but we're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, I'm going to cut this live video and cut this recording right. real quick. Stick around for a little bit, all right? You got it, brother. All righty.